Oh uh, yes, welcome back. My name is Mize, and today we're going to be talking about the last two episodes for Season 2, Part 2 of Bleach the Thousand Year Blood War. And let me tell you, this is 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 very intense. I'm actually glad um, that I, for, I didn't realize it was, that the, the last episode came out, and that the 26th episode came out, because this made everything so much more interesting. I'm telling you right now, like, I, I'm glad I waited um, because those two episodes just go so well together and you get everything and where I still have questions but let's just let's just jump right into the fray as all of you didn't see my last video which was the juju episode um, you will know that I will be going kind of fast and not being super detailed like I usually am just because I'm in the middle of the summer and fall season picking out stuff for the fall while finishing stuff for the summer so right now it's just hectic on what I need to do and what I'm choosing to do so just understand that we're gonna go super quick and it's not gonna be as detailed unfortunately now this whole the last two episodes aren't just fights. There are a few aspects where we go back to the ruined Serate and we get a couple of interesting tidbits and pieces. But um, the most of this is going to be focused on the fight. So I so there's not enough to where I could just focus on one. I will have to go back since it also plays into what happens in the Royal Castle, which is super weird. But we do get at the beginning of the 25th episode, we see Yurahara um waiting for some people as i we find out that that's yurichi's little brother sounds like a brother might be a girl no it's a sword but i'm gonna assume that's her brother it is but you uh yurahara actually waits for the visards who are coming to help and it seems like they're also going to go up there to the royal palace to help out with the fight that's going on along with ichigo and his other friends which i don't know how they're ending up there but uh we, we will see you uh you reach his brother tries to bring her some stuff in order to help but unfortunately she's already gone i think you know how they're still gonna bring it by any chance i would assume so um since she does allow him to go in um the blonde one who used to be the lieutenant to i think it was either sinji or yurahara they're both blondes i can't remember but they get some advice and stuff, or she said some snide remark um, before the opening credits and opening sequence starts. Then we go to the fight in the Royal Palace. And let me tell you, everything is, <laughs> it's, everything is very hectic as we have multiple fights going on and it's, it's chaotic. It's, it's hard to follow. So forgive me if I miss a couple of steps, but I'm going to try to do my best to recap this in the kind of most concise way as I can. So as most of this point, a lot of the Royal Quincy's that actually came back up there were taken out already. Um, so now it's only Oshwalt and you and Uryu that are currently standing against them along with Yuha looking at Ichibe. Um, I think they are engaging right now with it. I think Oswald is fighting. I want to say he's. Can't remember who Oswald's fighting. I think he's fighting the um, the Hot Spring Shinigami. Uryu uh, dodges one of his attacks, which divides them off. But Uryu goes after the Weaver Shinigami, and what we actually find out is the dude who's the Song Paktoji Megami, who was cutting everyone up in the previous episode. He is actually having kind of a hard time struggling against um, one of the. Quincy's who's actually still alive. It's the one that was brought up, who's the only one that we've actually physically seen that was in the Serite. I forget his name. I'm awful with names. But basically his ability is that he can assess the lethal dose of something and change it depending on how it is. And so for him, right now, with the Zanpato Shinigami, he's adjusting the lethal doses of blood as it's affecting that dude. And he's kind of like, you know, he's it's it's a scary ability to have when you when you know how to use it um so yeah that, that was a uh, seeing him slash everybody and then immediately go down almost by not even contact is insane each bay yuha are having their own battle each bay threw a line between like the gate or the pathway to the royal palace saying that he's going to make sure that he defeats yuhaba right here between here and obviously they're going to be everywhere all over the place but he summons like this this giant just hand which i assume is just made of reishi and just smacks him across the sky he flies with him and then he smacks him down again trying to send him back down from the royal powers to the serate um yuba i think does a does, i think he does another type of quincy blute type of thing to rip out his throat so he can talk 
or does something to his throat so he's able to actually communicate in in, in some regard oh i did miss a, an actual important part for that um before everything starts they do so the the, the fight actually starts with ichibe and yurohaba where it's smacking around and before we actually even see anyone start getting divided and we see squad zero squaring up between oswald and yuri and Uryu as the womb is starting to get broken down i'm not 100 percent sure how that's happening i would have, i would have to assume that maybe the weird gravity user is still alive in some regard they don't really explain it might be oswald's balance that's doing it um because he has the balance to you know change fortunes and stuff like that so that may be what's happening i'm not 100 percent sure and it's kind of unclear they don't explain because you know it's kubo and he fucking hates explaining everything but you know that that, that that's where we are and then as that proceeds then we start getting into attacks where the hot spring shinigami separates them uryu confronts the weaver shinigami we see the zanpakuto shinigami um falling down on, on his feet trying to survive as the fujinigami is trying to keep the womb together um so he they can keep everybody intact and whatnot so as where the fights are starting to be split up we still see that squad zero is dominating the quizzes very handily uryu goes against the weaver dreaming using his lichten right to shoot a bunch of arrows she weaves like a a hat that basically just nullifies the entire thing the hot spring shinigami is facing oswald um, they're having a kind of hand-to-hand -hand, hand of being a uh, hand-to-hand -hand kind of like battle um, but I actually I completely wrong about that he has a staff and Oswald as like a sword and shield he uses his staff to what he thinks is going to pierce but he actually swats it away so now Oswald only has a sword and when they you know exchange blows Oswald is the one that goes down and even the dude who was poisoning the Zanpakuto Shinigami he moves with the quickness still as he gets up and cuts his own throat because he's like okay well if the blood is so important or the blood is poisoning me all i gotta do is to remove the amount of blood that's poisoning me right which in theory works but then you have a bad balancing game of well you still need the blood to survive because it's your you know your body needs the blood but you still but you also can't have the blood because it's poisoning you so you gotta have to have a bad blood a bad balance of shit and so he's like yep that you know damn that would that would fuck with me if I was a normal person and <laughs> the dude, the hot spring Shinigami comes helping him out as he exchanges the blood, um, as he, as he like uses his hot spring ability that we actually find out not only re replace the spiritual energy, but also can replace blood. It just kind of depends on what type of hot springs he's using and what color it is. So now that it's red, he's actually able to change out the Zanpakuto Shinigami's blood with new blood. And so he's now fine. He doesn't have to do that anymore. So that, as we can see, the Squad Zero is still handing it pretty well to the Shini. The Shinigami, the Squad Zero is still handing it pretty well to the, the Quincy's and Yuhaba. And then for the final interaction between the Royal Quincy's and Squad Zero, the Weaver, the Weaver Shinigami who defended all of U Uryu's left and right arrow ability, basically converted all that Reishi to stuff that she could use and shoots at him basically um, just fucking give up in the process. And while the food, <laughs> while the food Zabato, um, while the food Zabato, while the food Jirigami is just up there, just, yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> and the squad zero is handling them pretty handedly. And so the last member of the squad zero that really has to do with anything is Ijibe going against Yuhaba. And, you know, they're having their duel. They seem like they're pretty even, but then we get an insight into what Ijibe's power really is, which is what I wanted to because he has the sword. So I thought it was kind of how, if any of you've watched Naruto, how Sai works, maybe he like, you know, he draws ability or he draws that, which is what I assumed with the hand, but I'm assuming that the hand might not even be like a Zanpakuto type ability. It might just be a Hado. Um, that, that's one name that, that's a thing that many fucking Bleach fans haven't heard for a very long time. I know we had a character use it already, and it's not uncommon, but Hados and Secret Hados and all that are just not very common of use here. <sighs> but no, what we actually find out is that Ichibei's ability with his sword is to actually not cut people, but cut names. And so what he did first is he, you know, stroke, he attacked, he attacked Yuhoba's arms. So now his arms are just R, 
<laughs> and so they're half the power they were so now his arms and his swings are not as strong and then what Ichibe then goes to do is swat at the entirety of Yuhaba so now he's just you so he, he Yuhaba right now is just you so he's half the power that he's at and he knows damn well that he doesn't have the ability to actually do anything right now right like because right now the squad zero could crush all the can crush everybody right now with just the strength of their fingers which is insane to see after watching almost like the whole quincy just like be such a struggle for for the soul reapers it makes you just really think like yeah you guys are just strong and i get it you guys need to stay at the royal palace but you know maybe if you guys were at the royal palace we could have ended all of this fucking shit already Maybe you guys were down at the Serate the first time. Yamamoto would be dead. I don't know. That's that's that, that's a that's a whole other argument. That's a whole other argument. I get it why they're at the Royal Palace, but fuck, man, could have saved a lot of lives. Could have saved a lot of lives. So Yuhaba realized, or I guess you right now, realizing that he really can't do anything, actually does a somewhat of a of a last. I wouldn't say last ditch ever, but like an alt type thing. And I, I'm not even going to attempt to try to say that uh, because I don't even know how I would pronounce it properly. But basically, he uses the ability. Basically, this the whole the reason why these all Quincy's and all the Quincy's that we've been seeing are so special is because they have power associated with Yuhaba. With Yuhaba, Yuhaba has been giving them blood to drink, and it gives them their stern ruler abilities. That is. Um, that can affect their Vulture stock. I don't, I, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it affects their Vulture stock, and sometimes it can, sometimes it, 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 it doesn't. It all kind of just depends on how everything goes, right? Of like maybe it can, maybe not. I'm just fucking out. But basically, Yuhaba has been giving all these people their powers, and as we've seen before, Yuhaba has the ability to take away those powers whenever he so chooses. This is basically exactly what he does you are about alts basically basically forcing all the quincy's who are currently below the serate below the royal palace in the serate to give back all the power that they currently have right now which is not really good which is very 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 bad <laughs> and so this does make sense why one of the other world the one of one of the other quincy's who was up there the, who was down there in the serate who came on the evasion the same dude who invaded um division 12 or was it division 12 like science space while Mayuri was there this is why he was desperate or was hoping to be chosen because if you're up there your 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 stern ritter isn't going to go away your 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 stern ritter isn't going to be taken by you because he's going to need your help up in the royal palace for that fight everyone else in the serite is a disposable pawn and people were pissed because we go down to the serite right and we actually see that giselle is still alive and it's it's a really creepy scene and it just plays more into the uh weird necrophilia that i think they're playing up with giselle where bambi is and bambi is also technically still alive um but i think she just kills her here she hugs her and what i thought was i thought they were i thought i, I swear i thought giselle was like doing some crazy shit but i think they're just she was just hugging and doing some stuff or he was just hugging and doing some stuff um little Oto, however finds giselle confronts her and tell well they're not in a bad way being like oh giselle i found you i knew you weren't dead and we actually get some insight that um you know tell little Oto's telling giselle what's been happening on her side that like you know she had to take out mendy and had to kill pepe apparently she said that while candy got captured or candy's got captured by the enemy and she had to take out mendy she doesn't actually think that both of them are dead and that they're still around which to be fair if giselle's still around and little Otto's still around which i thought little Otto was going to be the last surviving of the bambies because games got her ass with by yakua mendy got fucking taken out by little Otto, and giselle seemed like she got taken out by Mayuri, but i guess not unfortunately though we don't see much of this really be and it seems like they're planning to potentially do some type of you know attack back on the people who are still here unfortunately like i talked about before yuhaba up in the royal palace altered and is starting to take away everybody's power or, or everyone's stern ritter to make him and everybody else that's currently up in the in the royal palace 
stronger. Now the Quincy's in the bottom are fucking pissed. Like little Oto's power is gone, Giselle's power is gone. Fucking Basby sees that he's getting hit and he's just they're all just pissed. Little Oto and Basby especially are because it's just like what what do you take us for? Who do you think you are? Like coming through here just taking our powers um like you gifted us. Like what what are we to you basically? So I suspect that I don't think the Quincy's right now, um, I don't think any of the Quincy's now that they don't have their Stern Ridders are going to be any type of, uh, they're not going to be any type of fight for the Soul Reapers. Like the reason a lot of them were even hanging with the Soul Reapers was because they had the Stern Ridders. That was the only way they could have. But I mean, you have about reached his goal. He's at the Royal Palace and he has the people that he only really needs because the Royal Palace only has so many people defending it. Like, he could take care of uh, the special, like, Soul Reaper people. This Squad Zero does the problem. But everyone else is kind of disposable to him at this point. That They broke through the Serate and they made made it to the Royal Palace. So, I, I, I kind of get it. But I just understand why everyone's pissed. So, of course, because of this, we see him basically rain down the shower of Reishi that is being distributed to not only just him, but everyone else who is a Quincy in the Royal Palace. So, we see Oswald. We see the dude that has, like, the X-Ass exterminator. You see Jeral. We see Yu Uryu. Um, we see everyone who's basically there not only get like a like an, a, an application to the stern raider but now they all they own have their they all have their own wing abilities that are currently being activated and now it's basically round two run back between squad zero and the quincy's and this is where shit can start getting a little bit scary for squad zero and so this next part starts off with squad zero just starting to get bad luck right the x-axis dude is now back up and he's taking his shots and he's taking his shots at the zanpak do shinigami and he's 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 having a hard time everyone else tries to to block the bullets but unfortunately due to his ability i'm still not 100 percent sure because i really was bad at math and i forget like y axis and x axis shit like that i don't use that in everyday life but basically it basically just can, can go through anything and hits its targets. So the Zanpak Do Shinigami is just being being completely fucked. Um, the the Hot Spring Shinigami uses like his super bright blighting ability to let him get away. The Weaver Demon, the Weaver Demon, the Weaver Shinigami um, taking the Zanpak Do Shinigami away. And apparently she has some ability that can like just repair body parts. Like are you you're understanding how how broken that squad zero it is and honestly how broken the royal quincy's are too we'll get we we'll see how broken they are at later points but right now squad zero you'll see how they, they are they are broken broken i also didn't forget to mention i can't uh, this i'm pretty sure this happens at the end of the last episode but the the like ability to take everybody's Quincy Stern Ridders that uh, Yuhaba uses, it's such a powerful attack or powerful ability that the explosion after it's done actually destroys the entire womb that's currently trapping all of the other Quincy's in the fake Royal Palace. But um, while, you know, Squad Zero is getting serious, the Fujinigami actually rebuilds what I, I would assume that she rebuilds to uh, like a different womb, but it's a far stronger one that basically shreds everything in the darkness. So. As she, as the Fujinigami is doing this, we now see a whole new, basically, set of fights that are happening. Where there's Gerald, who is fighting the Weaver Shinigami. The Hot Spring Shinigami is facing the dude who can manipulate um, the Lethal Dose of stuff. The Fujinigami is de dealing with the Quincy that has the gravity ability. And the X-Axis Quincy is dealing with the Zanpak Dose Shinigami. I don't know or haven't seen where Uryu and Ashwalt are. They might have stepped back again. I know they got, like their power amplified as well but i don't know where they went to um i think I, I i'm trying to remember if they're in in this fight but i'll bring them up if i, if I do remember now even with the quincy's glow up from yuha bar's ult that he used it seems like that they're still kind of struggling by the way i should also mention this is episode tw 26 by the way i don't know if i said that <laughs> at all but gerald is fighting the weaver shinigami and he takes a stab at the doll at a doll that she used to use as a decoy Pins him down is about to stab him. The Fujinigami has crushed the gravity Quincy used her with just a bunch of of roots. Uh, the Hotspring Shinigami is currently playing cat and mouse with um, the dude, the Quincy that could change lethal dosage, and the Zanpakuto Shinigami is currently um, 
dodging all of his bullets and actually has a pretty clean shot and it putting pressure on the Y axis uh Quincy. All while Ichi Bay is still fighting Yuhaba now that he's got more, if not a lot more. It was still it has regained, if not gathered a lot more power now in order to fight Ichibe, but it's still seeming like a struggle, so it seems like Yuha's still on the offensive, and Ichibe is now in the mood that he's really gonna now attempt to kill him, where he's throwing attacks, he's using secret hotos, and Yuhaba is still holding his own. And there's a point where Ichibe goes for Yuhaba's yak, and I think he uses the same thing, if you remember a couple episodes, when Ichibe and Yuhaba are having their meeting, and he does uh, the same thing, trying to take his arm, or uses his, like, Quincy ability to take his did you like at least affect him or do something to take him over? Um, Ijibe just kind of forces it out and he does the same thing here, ripping out his throat. Um, he knew all about still standing, it's not enough to kill him, but now he uses I don't think it's his Bankai, it feels like his Bankai or some form of it, but basically, he he has a thing where you can't tell whether the you know the weapon he has now is either his brush or his blade, and so he's swinging it around and a lot of black ink is just flying all over the place and you hope saying like oh i don't really know what your ink's gonna do but it won't stand against my and he can't remember the name of his sword that's because the name of his sword unfortunately due to it being coated in the black ink that each base been throwing around no longer has a name so he can't like summon it he can't say anything about it it's lost his name it's not even like before where you could cut the name it's now lost its name therefore it has no power it's just now just a normal sword and you know you know Egypt you have us kind of saying how oh shit wait this is gonna be this is kind of a you know scary power but unfortunately things are gonna start turning a little different for squad zero and so after this happens we actually get to see really what the Quincy and that ability really did for them. We see Gerald getting a lot stronger as, if you don't know by now, his miracle basically gives him the ability to, anything he says that he could do gives him the ability not to. So before he was like, oh, that needle's not gonna work. And because he said that, it doesn't work. The Weaver Shinigami needle doesn't penetrate him. And she, and he just straight fucking fist her down to the ground and almost stops her out. The gravity, uh, Shinigami that was fighting the gravity Quincy that was fighting the food Shinigami um, is just destroying every root and every like type of thing she throws at him almost to ease the Quincy who could change the thing at least the dosage he's still playing cow and mouse but obviously he's biding his time being able to weave around the hot spring Shinigami and shoot an arrow directly into his stomach almost like super easy and the Zanpakuto Shinigami even though he's been taking like shots and he's been like oh well there's nothing in between us so you can't shoot us unfortunately that's not true he's he's been taking shots and so the way his ability works is that it shoots between the target that like everything between the he he basically can't miss a shot from his muzzle to the target that um from the muzzle to the to the target that he needs now the zapato demon fair enough was smart in the way you're supposed to do this because what he thought he could done was since it can't really hit damage or hit anything in between um yuhaba would have would have been in the line of sight of that but when he goes to swing we see that it actually didn't work my assumption they don't tell us why it didn't work but my assumption since kubo doesn't like telling us shit is that instead of doing just him and the other things he used the, the swinging of the zangpak toe as the in-between so that the zampak toe shinigami could have been the shot taken so that's what i assume and then up with ichibe and yuhaba fighting we see yuhaba you use another ability that basically takes away somebody's ability and so his thing was like basically up like being able to paint things black so he just took all the black away from the ichibe took his ability and now his on fire is well, still kind of blue but it looks like a blackish type of blue and he shoots it thinking like well we, if i shoot it with the fire and the black not only will you burn alive but your name will start being gone in theory your name will start burning away so it seems like the tables are turning for squad zero or so we think because ladies and gentlemen let me tell you what i just saw what i saw from those motherfuckers was probably the coolest thing I've seen in all of bitch. Fuck everything else. What I saw was one of the coolest things. And it's probably 
my new favorite Bond guy. Basically, Squad Zero is getting their hands kicked in them now with these new revamped Quincy's that are, you know, more powerful than they were when they first arrived to the Royal Palace. Squad Zero, though, has contingency plans for this type of stuff. Basically, they give the a ch they give the chance to be able to kill everybody to the Weaver Shinigami. And then what everyone else does is they give up their own lives. Now, all the Squad Zero people made packs basically with their own lives to seal away all their powers. And so when everyone, when anybody dies or gives their life up, like multiple people in that group get a power up, which I'm assuming Ichibei also gets this as well, potentially. Um, but the Weaver Shinigami is the one that has gotten a significant power buff because of this. And so she has this full I'm, I'm, and they tell her not to overdo it, which I was wondering is like, like, oh, she's probably gonna, you know, she's probably fucking the Royal Palace somehow if she does it, which her, I, I can't imagine how big her Bankai is. Oh my, oh my lord. <laughs> her Bankai is so okay so so let me i i i i i don't i don't even know how i would explain it it's such a hard bond guy to like truly explain but basically you know how before she was able to like weave skies and make images and stuff like that basically that's her own bond guy or her whole bond guy where she's in this like weavers like this like sewing room and it has a bunch of cloth and shit like that everyone is separated and each each room they have has a different effect like they have like one of the rooms one of the sheening um um the, the the quincy who can change the lethal dose of certain things he's in a room where it's basically like a cloth iron maiden like gerald is in a room where it just completely freezes him Uryu's is completely fucked oswald is in like in a room where it's burning him alive and he can't do anything about it like what i tell you when I tell you this Bankai is amazing, when I tell you that Bankai was beautiful, it was truly beautiful. It was like the trump card that they needed in order to truly take out squad, to, to take out the Royal Quincy's. And that was that, that baffled me. I've never seen, like the thing that, the only Bankai I think that comes close to that was like Rose's Bankai, where it had the like awkward, or orchestral sounds and the people like that's the closest bond guy i can think of that does something like that but man like it it, it makes you look at other bond guys like 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 kensi's and 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 i mean he's the only other one i could think of because this is like super simple where it's just like oh it's just a gauntlet and i can like punch stuff or whatever or even even looking at renji's one that he used to beat up mr um uh, ma uh, mass the mass superstar Quincy, where it was like you know that's an impressive bankai it looks, but it's nothing, nothing compared to what we just saw. It was truly insane. And let me say, when I mean insane, I mean like that bankai was so big and so powerful that it made the world of the living shake. The world of the living was shaking because there's a scene where you see it made the Serite shake and you looked at um you looked at Shunsui as he's looking up at the Royal Palace. You you see Ichigo's uh Ichigo's father and Uryu's brother. They can feel the world shake. Like it is I see where they don't use their Bankais. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that no one was using Bankais for that whole fight until now. I mean, no one called out Bankai, like, but still, like, I just, ooh, I, that, ooh. Ooh. I think what's even more crazy as well is, well, that's super strong. I would assume that Ichibei is even stronger than that because he's the one that pretty much took out fucking Yuhaba because we see that, like, you know, it's Ichibei still on fire. Yuhaba tries to walk away, trying to go to the Royal Palace, only for the fire to dissipate, to, to dip, to go away. And we see that, you know, before he, uh, Yuhaba took all the black and all left him with white, like, white beard Ichibei. But we see that he's, he still has the black on him now, which is like, wait, I thought I took the, your power away from you. Or I thought I took the black away from you. <laughs> Such a weird phrasing. But basically Ichibe explains like no 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 my friend when I release that ability I use which I don't think it's a Bankai but when I release that ability I use all black no matter who you are soul reaper quincy human hollow full bringer whatever the fuck you want to bring up whoever the fuck you are all the black in the world is is mine to use and I use it however I please 
And so this man is gathering up so much black to the point where he slashes down and he paints a straight line of black across the line that fucks, that just, just slathers Yuhaba in black, removing his name. So now Yuhaba doesn't have a name. So now what he does is that he changes his paint from black to white. And he's like, cool, then I can rewrite your name. And then he paints Yuhaba um, with black ant. And he's like, yep, now you're as weak and small as a black ant. He's not as small as a black ant, but, you know, he's like, now your power is a black ant only as weak. And he's just like, all right, you guys seem like they're gone. And you seem like you don't really have much left. So it's time for you to go. And he just uses a big feat to just stomp him through, sending him back to the Serete, like falling straight down. And that's where the episode ends. That's where the episode ends. And I'm just like, that's the finale. You ended the finale in such a way that, like, what? What is happening? Like, like, legit, like, I was so baffled. I was like, this is not how we're ending it, right? This is not how we're ending this, the season. Oh, fuck. This is how we're ending the season. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, my Lord. So, yeah, that was part two of bleach thousand year blood war i don't know what to expect i'm very tempted to read the manga um and see what comes next because i know it's going to come out i assume it's going to come out in the fall since it came out in the summer this time around and we're still in summer they probably need time so it might come out again in the summer i'm assuming it might come out fall we have no we have no inkling or indication of that but i might have to i might have to read this i might have to read this or really know what happens because i'm so invested now like you can't just end the season with yuhaba flying down back to the serete from the royal palace like that's insane they showed they showed that squad zero has no chill you 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 push back once and they're like okay fuck you jesus christ but yeah no overall this was a like i liked season one of the thousand year blood war don't get me wrong right because i'm a bleach fan i love that that's some of the things that was kind of little hey you know whatever the yamato yuhaba fight was so good but i think everything throughout this finally seeing like the quincy's class seeing my yuri come out seeing all the quincy abilities seeing all like the koshinigamis come out that we haven't seen in like a cool hot minute and then the royal palace that three episode span was such such a good 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 to take to it now i almost forgot and i will say it, there is two parts of the last episode i did forget where shunsui uh mentions that he's actually going to leave to see the serite um so he's, he's leaving basically he's leaving to the royal palace what it sounds like um and he actually runs into yukitaru or yukitai i forget his name but it's the captain of the 13th division and he has some weird ability it's not 100 sure I, for some reason, I was thinking like Full Metal Alchemist, and I thought it was like another way to enter the Royal Palace, but only a way that like the captain of the court squad would know. So I, I have no, I have no clue. But it seems like either soon she's going to make his appearance in the Royal Palace as well, or you a boss coming back down, and he's not being fucked around in the Royal Palace anymore. So I don't, I have no clue. Like I don't know if you Haba is gonna be up there. Um, again or not it it I, i'm so baffled i don't know what's going to happen it, and I, I i might read ahead because i i want to know so fucking badly because i know the bleach is done because there's the hell arc and that's like only like what like a chapter or two or something like that so i'm very oh oh i want to know and when we get part three of the battles of your blood war which i it feels like we might be coming to the end um i really do hope we get to see a lot of people that we haven't seen like i know at some point we see Yurahara's Bankai. I hope we see the Visors and they get some fucking balling out. They hinted at it um, at uh, in part one of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, but I want to know when the full bringers come back and when they play their role into all the shit or the, the two surviving full bringers that are around right now. I mean, technically, I think Chad and Ichigo, Chad or Hime and Ichigo, I know Ichigo does, but I think Chad and Orihime are still full bringers in a sense. So, you know what I mean? But, like, I, I, I just like this so much anticipation. I think just coming out the Royal Palace, I'm just so excited. Like, I'm so lit. Like, oh, it's like, if my love for, for Bleach for Bleach wasn't huge, it's so huge now. Like, I already, I already called myself my last name for my screen name, Kurosaki, but dude, I could, I could gush about it all day. I could gush about it all day. This, 
The season was amazing. The season was amazing and it was so fucking good. I think the only thing, the only thing that I sit there and I want to make a whole video about it because it's something that like, it bugs, it bugs me. It bugs my mind. Is the Vizard captains not using the holification? Like I, I get it if they were banned and like I said, Kubo is not the type to explain his shit. He's very like, you know, just fi figure it out through context. And so like, there's a couple of things where like I've heard theories where it's like, oh, maybe he just forgot. But I know later down the road, the other Vizards used theirs. And in the Hell Arc, someone who does someone from the Vizards who's currently part of like that main Vizar group who comes in to be a captain to replace um Shunsui's place, I think it was. He she uses her hollow mask in training with another person who comes back to train. So there's there's that. There's like a lot of things I said that I'm just like, bro, you can't look at me and tell me. That that's not the case that you can't look at me and tell me that's not the case so the only other thing i could possibly think about of why the vice captains didn't use their holification is either a they didn't have time to literally they didn't think about it because they thought all they would need was their bond guys which i don't know why the fuck you would go there especially after the aranka uh, arc where you know you would need it i don't know why you would think you wouldn't need it if someone is you know invading the fucking serite um uh, but the only thing that could possibly be of any logic is that you know they basically gave them like a under no circumstances can you use your holification powers and we have precedence for that right soon um, it's not soon to be but shinji is banned from using his bankai in the serite due to the fact of how it works where you know it mixes up friend and foe and it only leaves him standing so there's a basis for that but i i don't i don't know i just wish we i just wish we got more love for the quincy's i mean, not quincy's we got a lot of love for the quincy but more love for the visard captains and the visards in general but that's just me they're like one of my favorite group in bleach so yeah that's the oh, jesus that is the end of bleach we're wrapping up the uh, summer season as well so hey if you like this video and you like those last couple of episodes leave your comment down below and tell me what you liked about it um and if you like the video go ahead and like it and if you want more content go ahead and subscribe also if you want to support me anyway any way that you want to support me all the information you need is going to be in the link in the description now if you excuse me i gotta do what i gotta do and i'll see y'all in the next episode